Hey, it's Mark from Ripple Training. So we've noticed a lot of new visitors to our channel. So if you're new, welcome. If you like our content, consider subscribing and checking out our tutorials at rippletraining.com. Now, editing video takes a lot of keystrokes and clicking. And if you can eliminate even a single click or keystroke from a repetitive action, it really adds up in terms of saving you time and letting you focus more on crafting your story. So today on MapBreak Studio, I'm going to show you how you can save a bunch of time while editing using a technique I call press and hold. So here we are in Final Cut Pro. I'm working on a short interview piece with lots of B-roll. And the default tool, the select tool, is selected. If I move the pointer over the drop-down menu for selecting different tools, we can see it's the select tool that is currently active. If I click here, we can choose it or one of six other tools by selecting them here, which is slow. And you probably already know you can use these keyboard shortcuts to select them directly without using the menu. However, you can also invoke them and many other functions temporarily using the press and hold technique. For example, let's say I want to zoom into this area of the timeline. Notice my playhead is in the middle. If I use the keyboard shortcut command plus, I'll zoom in to the playhead location, which is not what I want. I'll press Shift Z to fit back to the window. Now I could click to move the playhead over here, but let's say I don't want to do an extra click. I could tap the Z key to invoke the zoom tool, and then I can drag a marquee around the area I'm interested in to zoom into just that area. But I still have the zoom tool selected. If I don't remember to tap A to go back to the select tool, and I click somewhere to select something, I just end up zooming in again. I'll press Shift Z again, and I'll press A to go back to my select tool. So instead of tapping the Z key, I'm going to press and hold the Z key. I now have the zoom tool active, but it's temporary. So now I can drag a marquee to zoom in, and I release the Z key, and I'm back to my select tool. Now let's say I'd like to perform a roll edit between these two clips. By default, I can perform a ripple edit on one side, I'll undo that, or the other, I'll undo that. But to perform a roll edit, I need to switch to the trim tool, which is a letter T. But instead of switching to it, I'll press and hold the T key, and I get the icon for roll edit. And that way I can perform my roll edit, find the point that I want, release the T, and I still have the select tool selected. And by performing this roll edit, I haven't changed the overall timing of this section of B-roll. For this clip here, I want to perform a slip edit. In other words, I want to see the second glass being put down, but I don't want to change the duration of this clip at all. So I want to perform a slip edit. Rather than pressing T to switch to the trim tool, I'll just press and hold T, and we can see the icon switches to the slip tool. I'll click and drag until that second glass on the right side is put down on the table. I'll release the mouse, I'll release the T key, and now I still have the select tool selected, and I've performed my slip edit. Down here, I have two separate gap clips that create a little bit of space for this B-roll so we can listen to some music playing during this little section of the B-roll. However, I don't really want two gap clips. I just want one. A quick way to fix that would be to, again to press and hold T and then perform a roll edit, let go, and we still have the select tool. Now we have a single gap clip. Now let's say for this clip, I like this clip, I like what it's doing, but I need to move it over to the left. I don't want to change the timing of my entire set of B-roll clips, but I just want to move this one over by shortening this clip and lengthening this one. In other words, I want to perform a slide edit. Well, once again, I'll hold down the T key, which gives me the slip edit tool, but if I add the option key, I get a slide. And now I can move this clip without changing its own in and out points, and I'm rippling the clips on either side of it. Then I'll release the option key, release the T, release the mouse, and I'm back to my select tool. I'd like to increase the volume of this music track while this section of B clips are playing where we don't hear the interview subject talking. Rather than switching to the range tool, I'll press and hold the R key, and then I'll drag a range out underneath this gap clip to about there, release the R key, and the select tool is still active. And then I'll increase the volume just for that section. Now, if I want to look at a different part of my timeline, 
I could press Shift Z to zoom out again. I could zoom in again. But rather than that, I'll just press and hold H for the hand tool, then drag over right to here, let go of the H, and I still have the Select tool active. Here I can see I need to trim this bit of the clip. I could do that by slipping it over, but if I press and hold T and perform that slip edit, notice how the attached title moves with it. Well, I don't want it to move with it. So what I can do is add the tilde or the grav key, which will override that clip connection, and then I can perform that slip edit without affecting the title. Release, and I'm right back to the select tool. Here, I want to remove this silent portion in order to tighten up the dialog. But again, I don't want to change the timing of everything. Now, I can turn on skimming with S, but I really don't need to. I'm going to invoke the blade tool temporarily by pressing and holding the B key. And I'll move to where I want to make this cut. I'll click, and I'll make cuts for the section I want to remove. And I'll do the same thing for the connected clip. Because snapping is enabled with N, I know those will align perfectly. And because I invoked the blade tool temporarily, I'm right back to my select tool, and I can select both of those with the command key and press delete. Then I'll press and hold the T key in order to get the roll edit tool and just roll over that extra piece, all without moving the playhead, all without enabling skimming. The position tool is really powerful for overriding the magnetic timeline, but it can get you in trouble. So here, I'd like to move this last quote a little earlier in time, but I don't want to disturb the ending here. I don't want to disturb our overall timing. So I'll press and hold P to invoke the position tool temporarily, and I'll drag this left to the point where we want it to start, and a gap clip automatically replaces where it was before without changing the overall duration of the project. I'll release P and I'm back to my select tool so I don't accidentally overwrite something else. And now I'm free to do a replace edit to replace this gap clip with a different shot. Finally, skimming, audio skimming, and snapping can all be enabled temporarily with the same press and hold technique. So right now I don't have skimming enabled, but if I just press and hold the S key, I can skim. And by releasing it, I'm out of skimming. Let's say I want to focus on this area here. I'll press and hold Z, drag a marquee to zoom in. I'll press S and release it so that skimming is turned on. But now if I press Shift S, I can temporarily enable audio skimming. And audio skimming is something that drives me crazy when you don't want it on. But instead of toggling it on and off, if skimming is enabled, pressing Shift S will temporarily enable audio skimming. Release Shift S and you're back just to normal skimming. So here I'd like to remove this first phrase. If I just trim to remove it, my clip connection doesn't move with it. I'll undo that, press and hold the tilde key, and then repeat that so that my clip connection remains the same. If snapping is enabled, it can be difficult to get close to a snapping point. And rather than turning snapping off, just simply press and hold the end key to temporarily disable snapping, move to the area that you want, release it, perform your edit, and now snapping remains enabled. I promise you, if you take a little time to memorize those keyboard shortcuts and use the press and hold technique, you'll speed up your editing and you'll have a lot more fun doing so. Do you have a favorite technique that you use to speed up your editing? Leave us a comment below. We'll see you next time here on MacBreak Studio.